Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Our program believes that women should be treated with respect at all times and in all places. Here's today's moderator, Nadia Giordana. Hello and welcome to It's a Woman's World. I'm Nadia Giordana and let me introduce my co-hosts today, Dr. Susan Strauss. Hi, Nadia. Welcome, Susan. Thank it's good you. good to have you here today. Yes, it is. I enjoy it. And Ty Goodwin. Hi, Nadia. How are you? It's always good to have you here with us. Same here. All right. And we have a special guest today, Diana Pierce, award-winning longtime news <laughs> anchor on CARE 11. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, Nadia, and everybody here. We really appreciate joining you today. Our pleasure. It's really good to have you here, and we want to talk about, uh, oh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things you've done throughout the course of your career, but you also uh, retired two years ago from the day to day, and you've st launched a new business, mm -hmm. and we want to hear a little bit about that. Okay, so uh, after leaving Channel 11, uh, I, I didn't want to be retired, I wanted to be unretired. So that's what I like to, you know, uh, that's what I prefer to see behind my name these days. And there's a lot of us in that category in the 50 plus uh, range. Uh, I had Chris Farrell as my guest not too long ago, and he writes for Next Avenue, and he's on Minnesota Public Radio and a few other things. And he has books and topics that are geared just specifically towards that. As far as boomers in it, across the United States, there are a lot of people that are in that same category. They mm -hmm. want to be unretired. They want to contribute, yes, exactly, to society in, in numerous ways. So some of that could be in uh, starting their own nonprofit or at least donating their time to a nonprofit. Some of them can't stop working because they haven't saved enough, and that's, that's too bad. So some of the things on What's Next, Diana Pierce, we talk about that. And then the other thing is they want to start their own business. They have a boatload of experience that they're bringing with them into that new venue, and so they want to try something new and, and different. And so those are the three different categories of the people that I have join me on What's Next. Mm. So I've that's... watched several of the episodes and it's been very interesting. You had a, a man, uh, uh, a, what was his name with the, from the wine country? Bill Just, Ward. Yes. Sure. Yeah. That, that was fun and interesting to watch. Right. He calls himself, and I thought this was very clever, a wine journalist. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, yes, he works for the Star Tribune. And uh, when I, in January, I was looking to add, uh, actually, the last December, I was looking to add a few things. And people out in the community said, you know, so who would you like to see me do some interviews with? And his name popped up. And I thought, well, okay. So I contacted him. He has his own website called Uncork This. <laughs> And um, it's it's really cute. But what he he was a Sid Hartman uh, assistant for many years, if you can imagine that. And I said, well, you you survived, didn't you? <laughs> and so uh, and he talks about that in our interview. And then from there, he just said that he liked uh, drinking wine, and no one really was doing much of that type of review at the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So he decided, aha, I found myself a niche, and so uh, he started that. So not only he's is he really an expert in Minnesota wines, but then and uh, California wines, and now he's a wine judge. Mm -hmm. oh. And he goes around the world doing wine judging. Now, he said it's not quite as glamorous as it sounds because you can't really drink all the stuff that you're oh. tasting. <laughs> so you really have to spit it out. So you have to have, you know, I have to understand that that's what goes along with that category. But he's met lots of interesting people, and so he shares some of his favorites uh, with me. We went into the kitchen in mm -hmm. What's Next to do it. So uh, we broadcast either out of our living room room or our kitchen so just kind of depends on what the subject is you had a, a day job where you were you know being an on-air personality and now you still are an on-air on personality and a lot of people when they unretire they go into something that's totally different mm -hmm. so how do you get started in being a, a broadcast journalist what inspired you to do that it, you know to journalism in the first place yeah. yeah so many many years ago I was on a plane and I think I was um, 
probably even be between high school and junior college years. And the gentleman that I was sitting next to said, you have a pleasant voice. I would encourage you to look into going into television or radio. Women are being hired in that area. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, I hadn't thought about that. At the time, I was with a singing group living in Hollywood. And so, and I knew that that was going to come to an end because uh, I, I'm not a lead singer. We had a lead singer. She went off to Nashville and toured with others, you know, so she, she's had quite a career. But uh, I thought, well, I'm going to look into this. And so uh, I did, and I moved back to my home in Central California, but I went to UCLA, and they had a, a summer school program on uh, Broadcasting 101. So I took that for a couple of weeks, and then when I was done with that, I thought, okay, I can do this. I can, I can see myself in that environment. And so I went to a junior college for two years. Years. Uh, I'm the youngest of three kids, so my parents always had a kid in college, and we're all four <laughs> years apart. So God bless oh. them. So it was, you know, four years, four years, and four years. We all kind of went through, and so junior college seemed like it was the, a good thing for me. It wasn't as expensive, but as a four-year school, I could live at home. I could work a little bit part time. I could I could afford the books and the tuition, and so that was perfect. And then I transferred all of my units to Boston University. So I do have a degree in broadcast journalism from Boston University. So it was, um, it was just one of those aha moments mm -hmm. of sitting next to a stranger who worked in television. I think he was wow. either a station manager or perhaps a news director, but he just, you know, he was encouraging, you know, oh, why don't you check that out? That might be something you could, you know, apply yourself towards. So I, but that's an amazing, Ooh. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. who knew? And the rest right? is history. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so what, what caused you then to start your own business doing what's next? I do appreciate, and I've been part of several nonprofits on boards through the years. My last one was uh, both the YWCA in Minneapolis and then something all, uh, called Cycle Health for Kids. And so both of those were things that I was interested in. Uh, um, so, but after that, and, 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 and again, after the Channel 11 thing, I, I took a little bit of time. I had just wrapped up my master's degree, and so it's Master's of Arts in Leadership from Augsburg University. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wanted to do that because I felt like I needed more tools in the toolkit to move forward to, to kind of dis determine what I wanted to do after Channel 11. And but it became one of those things where I literally, I think, was in Target and somebody recognized me and they came up to me and they said, what's next? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I kind of walked away from that and I, and I kind of said that to some friends of mine, a, a, a little group who are also producers, and they said, well, you know, what does that look like for you? And what would you think if you were to find an area for those 50 plus, there's a lot of things happening out there and maybe they need some information. Uh, okay, Legacy TV doesn't address that. That's typically 40 years and, and younger. Um, I like doing that. My audience is 40 to 70, mostly women, two thirds women, one third guys. And so the types of stories that I look for are information that you would not necessarily see on your local news, but still has relevance to what's going on, especially for that group. And they still have a lot of expendable income, which is good <laughs> to know as well. So, um, we, so I started working on it and developing it a couple of years ago. I did a, um, a PowerPoint deck type of presentation for another group, and then something else came along I did for another one. And then a friend of mine, so a year and a half ago, got a little piece of equipment, it's called a Mevo camera, but you can run it from your iPad mm -hmm. or your phone. <laughs> and I went over there to her house, and it's her living room, uh, so she has her program on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock, and was her intern learning how to use this, because I thought, well, that's really interesting. I, I don't need all the fancy equipment, but I can kind of learn from the ground up on this new technology. So I've always been interested in new technology. I just haven't been the best at it, but yeah, I'm interested in it. And so once I saw how she was doing it and how that was such a simple door opener, 
um, went out and got one and then started putting together, uh, well, what's this going to look like and who am I going to interview? So I started sending out. So I have a mental Rolodex from Channel 11 from, you know, many years. Oh, sure. And so I started thinking, well, who are some of the people I already know? And then once I get this rolling, I can put this onto both uh, Facebook and mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so it was What's Next with Diana Pierce was born. And so we've been off and running now since the first broadcast <laughs> was uh, January 26th. Uh, a year ago. Uh, well, I have a question for you. You said it's, it's women between the ages of 40, not just women, but right. individuals 40 to 70. Yes. Now, <laughs> how did you come to end it at 70? <laughs> well, that's how Facebook sends me the information. Yeah, I know that there Clean are Facebook. women above the age of 70 that are watching. Yeah. I know that. And you yeah, know, we yeah. live so much longer now, and people like Nadia's 71, <laughs> I'm 72. I mean, we're still active members of society. That's right. We both have our own businesses. And it's like 70. Well, that's so young. <laughs> I, well, you know, I agree. I agree. And, and, and again, when you, you look at the analytics, if, again, going back to legacy television, you know, basically they cut you off at age 40 and they're like, well, look at how much life you have after yes, age 40, right? Yes. And um, then when, uh, and, and we can get this, we can address this, except for male news broadcasters, they seem to have a lifespan past the age of 40 on the air. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll set that aside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, move on. Uh, so, but that's, that's what they give me. But, they also break it down in all categories so they can also tell me what countries are watching and and then I also post on LinkedIn so now I get to see all over the place not only just the cities in Minnesota that are interested in the, in the programs and, and and information that I have to offer but then you know I made a connection with China the other day I ended up using uh, India I ended up using a little bit uh, I said this is the type of story I, I really love because he had done a story for the BBC that was about a woman uh, doing yoga and she was eight no she was 98 years old and so oh, she I saw that yeah yes. it was unbelievable Unbelievable. Yeah. It's just a little quick little yes, thing. Yes. But she runs this and she you know, is passing it along to her family, yeah. and so she gets the the people in the neighborhood involved. They do it on, I think, the top roof of her pro, of her where she lives. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not sure. It's open air, and so I thought, well, the, again, you know, the universe is bringing me yes. topics and and people. So that part of it is, I wouldn't say it's endless, but it certainly is a vast wealth out there mm -hmm. that still can be utilized and shared, and that's yeah. what I'm most excited about. And and you shoot fairly regularly. Yes. In yes. Uh, in your home studio. Yes. And you still, I think you probably schedule some things. You find time to do some traveling too. You and your husband were doing some traveling not that long ago, and it looked real interesting. And you did some video work while you were traveling. We did. We went up to Alaska last year, so we were gone for about a month and a half, maybe two months, kind of. That we do have an RV, and so what we do is I'll tape ahead of time, and so we'll get a lot. A lot of this of what I've done is live. So um, what we do is we have our two or three camera setup. The the stuff goes into a mixing board, and then it goes into our uh, desk. These are for all the techies out there who might be interested in this. And then we have a, a program called Wirecast, and so Wirecast then puts it out to Facebook for us in the live portion of it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do what we did if we didn't have an interface like that. So I would say 50% of what we do is live. The other 50% is taped. Mm -hmm. So what I did when we traveled last year is we, I had previously taped interviews that then surfaced up on Thursday nights mm -hmm. uh, while we were gone. And so I also had a friend of mine that in case um, we didn't have it posted correctly, which I've uh, had that happen, uh, she had the, the flash drive and so she could post it. So we put her on as an admin as well to, to help us you know, get that done. So. The travel is also, we know in the 50 plus crowd, right? 70 plus crowd, people want to travel. They want to do some interesting things. Hence Bill Ward mm -hmm. on the other day because people want to travel around the state of Minnesota and maybe find out some interesting wines to drink and do that type of thing. So in addition to that, uh, uh, Scott and I have done uh, 
um, not only videotape, but stills of national mm -hmm. parks. And so we visited over 25 national oh, parks. Wow. We started in Voyagers. And there's so many Minnesotans that don't know that we have a national park in the state yeah. of Minnesota. Yeah, that I just is that. kind of mind boggling. You know, they think of the Boundary Waters Canoe area, that's not a national park. That's a wilderness area. But we have Voyagers National Park. And so our tax dollars go to pay for, you know, that. And it's, and it's an extremely, you know, fun little park to see. So his picture of an eagle on a tree has been used for Voyagers now a couple of times in some of their um, advertisements mm -hmm. or, or to get people for mm -hmm. give give to the Max Day. So they've, mm -hmm. they've used that type of thing. So then in, and then I also did something at, at sunrise at, at Voyagers and that one kind of like an online, you know, popularity, you know, contest. So uh, but then we just decided that we wanted to see some of the parks that we haven't seen either since we were kids or ever seen. Mm -hmm. So and our idea is we don't consider ourselves fine art photographers. We consider ourselves aspirational uh, photographers. Because you're both photographers, aren't yes. you? Yeah. Yes, both of us will take pictures. And we have different skill sets. So he likes the big, grandiose, you know, big, big, big picture uh, hard rise. And I like the little pictures of the flowers and things like that. So we'll, we'll kind of do different things. And we'll take, we'll stand sometimes side by side and he'll shoot one direction, I'll shoot the other direction. <laughs> and sometimes later he'll come to me and say, where'd you get that? Or, I'm yeah. right next to you. <laughs> you're looking that way, I'm looking that way. You know, so we, we've done that besides. So so we have had a, an exhibit at uh, Maple Grove uh, Arts Center. So that was last year. We just put up some more pictures uh, that are black and white. Uh, they kind of look Ansel Adam type things uh, oh, yeah. up in Baccio's. And um, so these are pretty massive pieces. It, they kind of give you that museum feel. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the whole point. So we have six of those up there right now. So the pictures up there are from Alaska Denali National Park and Yosemite. So we've got Half Dome. We've got the Grand Tetons. We have them in, in, in snow covered. Mm -hmm. We have Badlands in there. We have a, a Buffalo skull from Theodore Roosevelt in, in oh, North wow. uh, North Dakota and then finally the kind of the capstone piece is from Monument Valley now that's not a national park but um, it's the Navajo Reservation so they call it the Ni Navajo Tribal Park which it's if you haven't had a chance to do that absolutely do that and there's just a little bit of a fee to get in and you can take uh, you can either drive a little bit or you can take a little tour either way you get to see these incredible lands that you don't have a chance to see otherwise what would you say to somebody that maybe wanted to start what you do run a program on YouTube or on Facebook what advice would you give them and how do you make an income from doing that mm -hmm. or is are you doing it gratis I have no knowledge about what you're doing if it earns an income or well or not let's start with do? the first one first so if how does one start this I would suggest that you do your homework so I went into it knowing the backside. I know what producing is. I know what getting guests are. I know what writing the script is and timing the show and, and, and understanding what all of that goes into it. If you don't know what that is, then you need to do your homework on, on that one. Because you can add equipment as you go. So like I said, we had that first little piece and then we <clears throat> added to uh, microphones. We didn't have microphones for mm -hmm. our first broadcast, and it sounded like we were broadcasting from a cave because yeah, it was really echoey, so it wasn't good. Um, and then we went out and we bought two little cheap microphones, and so after listening to that three weeks, those aren't good enough. So mm -hmm. we went out and got some something else. And so then we got another interface, and then it got to the point where it was like, well, we already have Sony cameras, let's hook those up and do so. Each step, and it was it was gradual. Mm -hmm. It was gradual, but it made the product, I think, a little bit better and a little bit better. And then I learned how to do a little bit more editing, and um, and I was really hesitant at that. I mean, when you work with the best in the world, basically at Channel 11, uh, and, and all the stations in this market are have some incredible videographers and yeah, yeah and and uh, editors and so uh, when you work with that I was a little intimidated when I first got started but you know there's <clears throat> asklinda.com <laughs> <laughs> and then um, YouTube oh my gosh any type of you you know tutorial yeah. it's, there. it's there 
it is there. So I so I watched hundreds of hours of tutorials on this just to make just to make our, our product a little bit better. Now on to making a, a, a business at it. Um, because of what of how I've been working uh, on it, it it's been I'm positioning it to be a business to business type product, so that somebody that's interested in that market would want to come in and either be a sponsor or sponsor once a month type of thing. So I'm in the process of, of actually talking with a couple of companies right now to see how we move forward with that. So you know, right now it's but it's it because it is a new business, it, just like all entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. It's going to be out of your pocket for a while until you find how you can make that work. Unless you're just you have the world's best you know widget gadget and they're going to buy it off you. And, and you know, it, it, success is never overnight. Mm -hmm. it, it is always you know a step at a time. So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Well, it must make a difference that you absolutely love what you do. Yeah. It, well, it, it well I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't. <laughs> so I mean you know <clears throat> somebody said why don't you just be retired? And it's like well because I got more to do. There's things that I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I've always been a reader, uh, but for me, it's turning that part of it around and like, well, somebody shared their information with me. Why don't I share mm -hmm. their information, you know, someplace uh -huh. else? So, you know, hence the guests that we have and, and their, their, you know, Serve Minnesota we had on to talk about, you know, how you can basically be paid for volunteering because that's mm -hmm. what that, that organization, but it's a nonprofit, mm -hmm. but our, you know, but it's, we pay for it. And so uh, I had a mentor come and, and talk with me uh, along with the uh, president and um, she teaches kids uh, reading skills, you know, so second and third graders, and she loves it, mm -hmm. and she was going to do it anyway, but now that she served up with, with or uh, signed up with Serve Minnesota, Serve MN, she gets paid for it, but she now can turn w her wages into sending her daughter to college. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can reverse that in a way that's win-win for everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's and just part of that. Any potential of writing a book down the line? I, I've been thinking about that. We'll, we'll see probably if, if I, if, uh, if I can move some of these other things, yeah, you know, or I, it ta yeah, it takes takes a bit of time. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see, but then, then again, it would probably focus back on how do you transition mm -hmm. from whatever it is mm -hmm. you have been doing, right? Mm -hmm. Transition is about everybody yeah. from uh, into the next step. So I've got a lot of great transition stories. Two women that that stand out on that one are from the Urban Growler here in the Midway area, and so they were both in corporate. Uh, careers for 20 years and one of them has like a chemical engineering degree and the other one was uh, in marketing. I, I saw those scales. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they just decided they had uh, lost some friends and they woke up one day and said, okay, so w let's do our dream. You know, and that's a lot of people who are entrepreneurs. They have a dream. And so, but with their years of expertise, they decided that they were going to try and and create beer, open a brewery, and, and make a great product. Deb had already been doing that in the garage, <laughs> which a lot of brewers do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They start in the garage. You know, we started in the living room, they started in the garage. So um, they, she then, they went out to California. She has a degree from University of California uh, on beer making, just like you would get one for wine making. Mm -hmm. uh, again, older student, you know, has, has flipped this and now it's going a different direction. They came back and then they started looking for uh, banks. And so bank one and two turned them down and three and four turned them down and five and six turned them down. And now they're looking at each other going, are we wearing the wrong clothing to these interviews? What's going on? I know. Yeah. These days. I know. And they're like, well, how come the guys that are 10 years younger than we are getting the mm -hmm. bank loans? Mm -hmm. So they went all the way through bank 12 and bank 12 said, mm, we're not comfortable with this. So then they said, okay, look, we're going to try something different. They started a GoFundMe type mm -hmm. of product. It wasn't that, but, right. it, but they did. So then they raised uh, money on taking people through tours of their non-existent brewery. 
They put out t-shirts for their non-existent brewery. Oh. They sold, you know, her samples uh, at, uh, you know, around the Twin Cities. And, but they were able to raise $500,000 so that when they went to bank number wow. 13, they came in and said, absolutely, That's we amazing. will do business with you. So they have named one of their beers, or their, one of their beers is after th that bank. So there's 13 stars on a horseshoe. That's, <laughs> yeah, so it's their lucky horseshoe and it's I their like lucky their bank, logo. isn't it? Wow. They have, That's logo. fantastic, yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm... And how creative to come I up know. with coming through the back door to get their needs met. Right, exactly. And so they're very clear clever with all of their beer you know they have one of the beers is like your best uh, lawn mower you know after you you know mowed your lawn this is the beer you want to have when you walk in the door so mm -hmm. I, and you know they, and their story is that they they are still doing it so we're, we're friends we've been over there now several times since we've done the interview it's like okay what's on tap this week yeah <laughs> and we're not beer drinkers we're wine drinkers so it's like oh but we'll drink their beer yeah. you know do you uh, have do you have any trouble at all finding guests for your show or do you line them up months ahead getting ready to pretty go? much months ahead and uh, not everybody but pretty much um, makes sense yeah it, it just it just helps that way you know mm -hmm. when you're kind of organized organizing things um, even we do it here with this a little right exactly exactly but I, I had people again but I went back on on the Facebook page and said all right who do you want me to interview and so in December they said oh you should really interview this gentleman who's just started this new theater called theater 55 and so his name is Richard Hitchler and so he's the director of this he had been with uh, stepping stone theater for a number of years mm -hmm. and so then he was on the Minnesota the state arts board and he was kind of looking around and he's like well wait there's you know this category of audience that's not being served with then actors on stage that fit that category mm -hmm. so his youngest actor they did hair by those who lived it <laughs> um, and it was sold out so so much so and and so this was in February so so much so that they're now coming back with a second production this fall but he was he was fantastic so there are people out there doing things either because they're interested or you know because they were forced into something looking having a look at a transition maybe they wouldn't have done that in his case uh, he he wanted to find you know something that was gonna create his uh, get his creative juices going so that that worked for that there's a, another friend of mine um, and he started free bikes for kids so mm. I had him on Channel 11 the first time 10 years ago when they kick, kicked it off so they're going into their 11th season this year okay. and so uh, he was like I just see all these kids bikes sitting around and nobody's using them and yet we've got a lot of inner city kids that could use them so let's just collect these bikes mm -hmm. and fix them up and give them a new seat and new handlebars and let's just recycle them and oh. so he did that he started in his garage and now he's got five states involved the UK is in involved you know they've set a world record for the most bikes collected at the at uh, the mall of america so i mean it's just poosh, just oh, blown up so, so great well yeah. we're running out of time <laughs> <laughs> this has been fascinating i wanted to hear more about that bike fellow but we're done for today thank you so much for being on the show oh, i'm well, glad you could be thank here thank you susan thank you thank you with it's us always enjoyable oh me too and ty fantastic stories yeah thank you thank Thanks, you for inviting Diana. me You're i appreciate welcome. it and thank you all for watching us today we'll see you next time